Hello, this is Wes Fryer. I am here in Philadelphia at the ISTE 2011 conference, and my voice is really not what it was at the beginning of the conference, but that's okay, because I'm not going to talk much. I am with Dr. Lee Zeitz, and did I say that right? You said that right. All right, I just say Dr. Z, and uh, Dr. Z is going to share a little bit about what he shared at the ISTE conference, and uh, maybe a little bit about why ISTE has been a great experience, and I I think you keep coming back. So tell us about what you did this year. This has been an amazing conference, hasn't it? I mean, I've been coming to the ISTE conferences since 1992. Uh, actually, I missed a couple. Once I was in Malaysia, the other one I had back problems. But aside from that, I think those, those count. But uh, yeah, no, this is an amazing place where I get to come back and meet with my friends and see the, th- the things that people are doing. Uh, and one of the things I really enjoy doing is I enjoy sharing. And I did two uh, uh, sessions this time. First one was Dr. Z's Creative Cookbook for Collaborative Communication. And it was terrific. I had 400 people in there, and it was, it was one where we had an opportunity to share, to interact, even with a large group like that. It was, it was quite successful. And then we did a, a workshop. It was called uh, um, Digital Portfolios Made Easy with Google Sites. And that also is something. If you can go to dpme.org, you can download the templates and use them yourself. So this is something I've, I've really enjoyed this. All right. So digital portfolios, I had a chance to talk to Helen Barrett uh, a couple nights ago. Um, This is interesting, too, because, you know, I would say as the words were spoken, the light, you know, came down. We're probably getting (laughs) different lighting effects here. So, you know, ideally we'd be in a controlled lighting situation. Obviously, we're out here in the wild. So we talked a little bit about digital portfolios. Uh, That's been discussed by quite a few folks. And I know... uh, because we visited today about mm-hmm. this, that right. you, you have a philosophy on portfolios that's not just about the device, the software, oh, no. you know. So how do you encourage K-12 teachers and administrators to think about digital portfolios and what tools do they use? Well, here's the thing. It's not about the tool. What it is, it's about the philosophy of why you're doing it. Because actually, typically what happens is you end up and they'll say, well, we have eight standards, and each standard has, you know, ultimately we have 42 subcomponents. And so what they'll do is they'll give you this uh, notebook and the notebook will have eight indexes, and then behind each one they have all these artifacts. And then what they will say is, we will expect three artifacts behind each standard. Who cares about that? It doesn't mean anything. What you need is you need something where if you, something that's important to you. If I'm, if I'm an artist and I have a portfolio that I take around, what it does is it shows the things I do best. So as a teacher, if I happen to be a science teacher, and let's say that I'm a science teacher, and, and what I specialize in is inquiry teaching, you know, inquiry thinking and, and, and learning and that sort of thing, then what I want to do is I want to tell people that this is, I'm the go-to guy for this. That's what I want to show off. This is my love. This is what I want to show off. So what I do is I identify six, seven different artifacts that really show this off. And then what I do is those become the beginning of my portfolio. Now what I have is we have it set up. I've got a whole template set up, and that's at, at Digital Port, um, Digital Portfolios Made Easy. That's dpme.org. You'll see it right there. Okay, and, uh, and what it is, is it's something where we have these templates we've created. And what happens is you have an opening page, and then we have a matrix. The crux of it is the matrix. Going down the left-hand side is where all of the uh, artifacts go. Going across are the standards. And then what you can do is we check off which standards they hit. These are also linked to the artifacts, to the standards. And the beauty of this whole thing is that it puts the artifacts and the person at the center of the piece. Now, once you have that, now, and like I said, um, and, and what I do is I define the, kind, the, the typical way of looking at this as standards indexed, whereas what we're looking at, what I'm talking about, is standards referenced, where the, the artifact is in the center and the standards are being referenced rather than indexed. So it's really a showcase. It's an opportunity to showcase where you feel your strengths are and put that best foot forward uh, in a digital, a digital space. And, but you also have, you have to address all the standards. And so what you do is you put your top seven in there, or top six, And then you backfill the rest. That's a little Iowan term, you know. You backfill the rest until they're all taken care of. Then you've got a reason for doing it. Okay. And so, and now, what's what hardware to use and what software to use? It all depends. Now we use. I've got a whole system that's set up using uh, Google Sites. It's free. It's easy to do because we've got all the templates set up. Um, But it isn't good if you want to use that to try to collect all the data for your whole program. Um, There's some that cost a lot of money, but what you need to make sure is you need to make sure that what it does is it puts the artifacts in the center, it aligns with the standards, not just saying the standards are over here and you can take a look at it. You also have to make sure that it's something that students can get to even when they're out of school. Right. And it needs to be easy. Yep, 
Absolutely. Okay, one more question. You've yeah. been coming to the ISTE conference for a number of years. Mm -hmm. You've seen changes in technology. Um, how has the, the rewards and the ways that I guess you come as both a participant and a presenter changed over the years, or, or has it changed? Has, it, has that part kind of remained the same? Well, I mean, it's gotten much bigger. I mean, I don't know how many it was back in 1992. It was much smaller. But, I mean, we had, what, 18,000 people this time? I mean, this is huge. In fact, I think there's only six uh, cities in the whole nation that can handle this kind of people. Um, but the, the people, I mean, meeting people, I mean, what's so great about now that we have things such as PLNs and that sort of thing, we get to come here and actually see what the people look like in life. But um, we get to meet people. We need to get Sometimes to it's scary. It really is. You're much bigger than you are in the picture. And then... <laughs> Yeah, right. And then, then what happens is we get to see that, we get to see new ideas, but it's, it's just a great place for people to come. Uh, well, Chris Lehman had a great way of saying that. He said, uh, we can come together face to face, but we should never be apart. I thought that was a uh, nice, good. nice way to say it. Guy is really he listening. is good. So if people want to find you online, just one more time, uh, how, do they, how do they find you online? Well, you can go to drzreflex.com. That's drzreflex.com. And please show up because I need the traffic. Thank you.